And we're back. Yes. Now, before we start anything, we have to correct the mistake that TDF made last part. I didn't make it, by the way. He called the Game Freak the people behind this game instead of Genius Norty, the people who actually made this game. Apologize now. Yes. I'm truly sorry, and I will commit seppuku for this heinous crime that I have committed. I mean, who could ever forget Genus Sonari or Rarity D, Such the not. brilliant creators of games such as this game and 100 Jose. classic books collection for the DS. <laughs> Goddamn. Anyway, back to Coliseum. This is. I know I complained about this in the last part, but now that now on uh, retrospective, it's not that this game really has a lot of. Event flags in general. It says that there are a lot of there are quite a few areas where there are a lot of condensed amount of event flags that you have to do in rapid succession in order to get shit done. This is one of those times, but for the most part, you can progress to this game fairly linearly, just like in any mainstream game. Not to mention that, but I forgive it because Pirate Town looks fucking awesome. Yeah, I have to completely agree there. It has a great aesthetic to it. It really, it really shows off like what a turn this, how different this game is uh, from the other mainline games. Like this game's a lot grittier, and it's not just your typical sort of shoehorned in, oh, it's dark and mysterious sort of game. Like this game actually has true, oh, dare I say, it, true grit. To yeah, it, 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 it reminds mean, me like very this... much of how in games like fa like Fallout Three, for example, it, it, where it's kind of post apoc that This game, this town really looks like it's stitched together, very improvised. Like they. Like it's held together on sticks and glue. Yeah, exactly. I mean, this is like this, this is the first thing when I walked into Megaton for Fallout 3 was, you know, this is basically Pirate Town, but in the first person perspective. And they're, I mean, damn. Yeah. Well, what you just saw there, uh, you know, with all the orange stuff going or aura going around uh, Flappy, is the fact that it's, it's hyper mode. What hyper mode is is that occasionally, randomly, a Pokemon will skip a turn to end hyper mode. During hyper mode, a Pokemon will ignore your orders for the most part, and but it will also gain a high crit rate. It will also reject any items you want to give it. Now, the real purpose of hyper mode is for you to call it out of its, basically, out of its state by using the call feature, which is, you know, that feature that you never saw us use before. No, and by the, the way, menu. the call feature also makes putting your Pokemon to sleep just not even a minor annoyance. You could just—you don't even have to carry any items. You just call them, and they wake up. Yeah, which kind of which kind of makes the you know things like uh, sleep, uh, freaking awakenings, like freaking useless. Yeah. But yeah, I, uh, hyper mode. The entire point of it is just to call them while they're in hyper mode, and you know, just it, it will significantly lower their shadow amount. Yeah. Also. Now we are in the presence of Mirror Beast swag. Yes, uh, what do you think of his, you no know, design versus design in XD? Oh, by the way, I expect us to compare, I mean, even though this game was made before XD, there's just no way I can really play this game without making comparisons to XD. Vice versa as well, when we probably do a playthrough of XD, I'm gonna mention that a lot. Regardless, yeah, oh my god, I actually, I, I, I actually prefer how he looks in, uh, XD. But in terms of theme song and personality, I think I prefer him from this game. In this yeah. game, he, I, I honestly thought he was a woman when I first saw him. Oh man. You know, just a very flat chested woman. Well, anyway, here's an example of where event flags, you're gonna see in a second where how event flags can fuck you over. Uh, I'm walking really all the way to the theater. I think, I'm thinking of uh, getting into the Shadow Pokemon base where Mirror B is by entering the Coliseum. First, I'm gonna heal up. Yeah. Speaking of, I think this is like the only game where you actually heal up by manually clicking on the healing machine and Nurse Joy doesn't act as a middle woman. Uh, except, except in a. Uh, Elm's Lab from Gold, Silver, and Crystal, where you can also manually click on this. But you know, this is riveting trivia. I do like the regardless. Look of it. I really like. I also, I also like the look of the PC. Very futuristic. Yeah. Regardless, she blows me off, and now I remember what I have to do. I have to go all the way back and trigger another event flag in order to get into the Coliseum, in order to get into Mirror Beast Base. So. What are your opinion? What is your opinion on uh, the fact that it's 3D but still locked in from the same perspective as the mainstream games, mainline games, whatever? Locked in the same perspective? What you mean, sort of? Sort yeah, you know, from this from this aerial bird's eye view sort it's of not, thing. This, this is more over the shoulder, I'd say. But yeah, being I'm, locked in the same perspective, I really don't care. I mean, the the core gameplay is still the same as the core as the mainline Pokemon games, so there's really no need for a camera for a movable camera. Yeah, I mean, because I know, I know from some people I've talked to, one of the reasons they were disappointed with this game is that they thought the fact they were adding this third dimension would allow you to maneuver the camera and just explore this Pokemon world a lot more. But uh, people were disappointed that, you know, oh, it's still, you're just still locked in from this perspective. Mm -hmm. Well, there's not a lot to look at in this game that you, that requires moving the camera around. 
which I guess is what people were complaining mm -hmm. about. It, it's still, I still think it looks really good, though, just, yeah. you know, the fact that it's in 3D, it's very refreshing. And now we've triggered another event flag before we can still get to the Coliseum. Yes. He's drunk. Ugh. Bad night. Anyway, Sylvia, one of uh, Duke King's friends, stole the gear to the freaking windmill that generates power for the entire town. And uh, now, until we get the gear back, we can't go into the Coliseum. Now, when I first played this game, the first thing I thought of was, Oh, I'll just go to the outskirts stand. There's a ton of gears there. One of them is probably it. Nope, it's all the way in the construction lot that we were in earlier. So, yeah. that's kind of, you know, done. they did that to fuck you over, too. Also, what, don't you... This game seems to be... I remember when talking yeah. to this guy, doesn't he just sing? Just, when you talk to him after this, he, all he does is sing. Oh yeah, 30 long years I've been cranking yeah. years. <laughs> anyway, yeah, the the guy who hid this just did not hide it in a good place. Just gonna say. You think he'd he hid it in a good place when I was playing? Cause I, I spent like half an hour looking around the goddamn outskirts down for the correct gear. Nope, turns out it's all the way here. I'm just surprised none of the workers noticed it. Yeah. Yeah, this gear <laughs> looks a lot smaller than right over there than it will when we put it down again. I just like how it goes in Animal Crossing, like he managed to fit it in his backpack. Yeah. At least, at least the guys in the po mainland Pokemon games who actually have a backpack. Well, no, he's just putting it in his yeah, pocket I mean, here. Yeah, I do like it. I know. I really do like it when games try to uh, actually go out of their way to explain things that people just take for granted in games that they just don't question it. Like it's kind of like how uh, you no, know, this whole thing with the backpack thing. Like, Coliseum doesn't explain it, but I know of a few games that do explain how you can have this unlimited space. Well, like an infinite like. Well, well, yeah, it, Borderlands it, like, explained it. Borderlands explained that you had this shit that that you pulled it in like some sort of hyperspace, and it, and and when you looked at people in multiplayer taking. Uh, gear out from their self, you can actually see it sort of zapping into existence. Mm. Nice little touches, you know. But back. Yeah, there we are. On. I like this entire job just consists of moving the lever. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, such a hard job. Like how he, like how when, I think if you talk to him after this, he'll pretty much just question the fact, saying that you probably can't do this as well as I can. I think that was probably. Also, I like duking here. Game. Yes, from picking up the gear and putting it back in its place, you truly have shown your worth as a Pokemon battler. Well, remember that guy from the beginning? We told him we weren't Pokemon. <laughs> we weren't the Pokemon battler yet. Still, he praised our non-existent Pokemon. Yes. Anyway, now we're going to enter the Coliseum, which is one of the core things in this game. You know, it's kind of named after it. Coliseum modes are basically where you are four round knockout matches, yeah. and that's really it for them. You get healed after every match, and you have a prize for winning. Uh, it's... I always thought the arenas in this game looked really cool. I mean, this is one of the things... Uh, the arenas in this game were one of the things that made it, like, this uh, successor to the stadium games, because you could connect up your Game Boy Advance to this, and then battle your, you know, a Game Boy Advance Pokemon games against the... in, in this 3D arena field. So I thought looked really cool. Especially with the crowd in the background and the cheering and everything. And now we just speed yeah. shit up. Yeah, shout out... Uh, shout out the freaking... Hyper modes always seem to come in the most inconvenient yeah. times. There's not much to talk about here, to be honest. Just speedy battles. The, 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 yeah, the, the, the Coliseum mode in XD was actually a lot harder, I remember, because in XD the level was a lot higher. Yeah. Honestly, I, 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 I did like, uh, whatever the fuck. What's that place called? Battle? What? Fuck. Mount Battle? Mount Battle, yeah. That, 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 yeah, I, that I, I found really that cool. more entertaining than the Coliseums. Oh, yeah, I mean. Mount Battle was really awesome. It, it was time consuming as fuck, but I think we should talk to the you know, safe yeah. about it when we actually get there. We're just gonna have to stick to this boring old Coliseum knockout match. There, this, 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 the, the Coliseum that they're also pretty much this game's way of training you in a way. Since there are no wild Pokemon to just grind against, you can just grind against the Coliseums, which are actually more effective, I would say, than wild Pokemon because you know they're trainer battles. Yeah. And, yeah. I don't even. I, I, don't, I honestly don't even know why they put wild Pokemon in XD. Yeah, I mean the wild Pokemon. But more on that when we actually get to XD though. 
We don't want to yeah, use we, up all like our said, material. It's kind of, yeah, it's kind of hard to talk about this game without talking about XD as well. Just like I said, you know, when we go around XD, it'll be hard. Because these games are a lot. There's a lot of comparisons that can be drawn between the two. Despite XD coming out after this, there are still a lot of things that I think Coliseum did better. Yeah. For one, would be like, the mood, the, but. Like, like the one thing I did wonder in this game is what the hell is up with the trainer classes? Like, what the hell is a what the hell was like in the la like the last trainer class was a chaser? What the hell is a chaser? A bandana guy. <laughs> oh, you you're, you wear a bandana. You're instantly part of this gang of the bandana guys. <laughs> guy of bandana. Do you think you think that's what do you think that's what what goes under his job description? Bandana guy. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, not much to talk about, like I said, just... Just, just slam him with Shadow yeah. Crush. Oh, uh, I forgot to mention this, but at, when, when you first capture a Shadow Pokemon and their Shadow Bar is still to the maximum, as you probably realize, they only have Shadow Rush as their only move. However, as the Shadow Bar progresses downwards, I believe it's every two bars, uh, you er, you retain another move yeah. from your original set. Look at that bodybuilder. So fucking... I always up. thought... I, I always really love the the, ba the boss battle music in this game, like here. Well, I thought, I, thought it yeah, really I, I don't know, awesome. I think it's not bombastic enough for me, it's just the... This is basically the generic mini-boss battle music, isn't it? Like, I know it happens, well, you hear it a lot in Mountain Battle. Well, yeah, you see, this is one of the things that I actually really like, though, about this game's soundtrack. It's like, unlike the main line games, had all this, you know, poppy, energetic music that's constantly trying to keep your blood pumping, this game had a much different take. This game was a lot more serious. It had this, like, almost or uh, grander orchestral-sounding stuff, which is what actually makes me wonder, like, how awesome an, orchestral, an actual orchestral cover of this game's soundtrack would sound like. Because this game has some really grand music to it, and I just really like that. I, I thought the music pretty well complemented the game well. Like, this game wouldn't be as good with, like, poppy, energetic music. Yeah. Fits the mood more. Mm. Like, like, for instance, the, like, sort of jazz, snappy sort of thing that goes on in Pirate Town. Pirate. Pirate Town. <laughs> oh, just... <laughs> Pyra. I, I, I remember I used to pronounce it because I was, like, fucking dyslexic or some shit when I was younger. I pronounced like, just, like, in a lot of video games back then. When I first played them, I always pronounced it, so I pronounced it Pirate Town. Oh, God. Also, didn't the anime actually establish that Goldeen does, in fact, float in midair? I, haven't, I, I can't remember. I, I remember, like, there was just, It was, like, one of the specials, like, no, Pikachu and Ash's anniversary, whatever, where we saw Goldeen floating in midair. Well, I'm not sure what to say about that. <laughs> That's just how fish work in this game, and in this universe. Shadow Rush everything. It really is your best attack, because it's super effective against everything. No, 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 that's actually not true, that's only in XD that's super effective against Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, fuck. Alright, so it's not really your best. It just has no type, it just has no type resistances, that's the thing. Yeah. So this makes it useful considering you can just pretty much slam away with it, but you can't be entirely careless because it does still do a sizable amount in recoil damage. Yeah. Oh, Deli Bird. Oh yes, I love Deli Bird. I know, I, I think Deli Bird's a great Pokemon too. It's just, it's just, I mean, sure it's not the best Pokemon like stat-wise, competitive-wise, or just in general, but it's just such a cool design-wise yeah. and conceptually I think it was always really cool. I just want to hug one. Hang out with it. Why are you so boring, uh, you fucking that, battle? That, dude, that Delibird was butch. It took a critical shadow rush. <laughs> Delibird's the Gotta man. respect. You gotta respect the guy who just gives presents to his enemy. To his, it, it may be filled with explosives, but he's still giving presents to his enemies. I know, right? And that's the end of the battle, finally. I, I do like the sound effect of the going in the Pokemon. I I was you know one thing I, I really like about the, about the costume I, I, I mentioned this a few minutes ago but I do really like how there's always a crowd cheering in the background. I always thought it made you feel very triumphant. Yeah. Well, wait, wait, wait. Did they even cheer when there's nothing going on? 
Basically. They're just staring yeah, at each other. Next... Yeah! Stare at each other! Fuck yeah! <laughs> Get pumped. <laughs> anyway, here I get I use a TM I got from that uh toxic and I use it on my Umbreon. Toxic is amazing. It's um, it's just such a great move. Especially in combat. Yeah, it, it's funny. Because if you use a toxic I notice it's like Oh yeah, by the way, Shadow Pokemon can't learn TMs. Yeah. So you have to purify them first. Toxic is like one of the moves that pretty much any Pokemon can learn. Yeah. But not a lot of. Which actually is kind of creepy. I know there's like a creepy pasta comic made about it, but it's kind of creepy to think that like a Jigglypuff or a freaking uh, adorable Eevee or something can just suddenly belch out this horrific, like, pile of slime. Uh, I always imagined it as sort of a purple cloud. Right. Kind of like smog. Anyway, now we have no choice but to go into Mira B's laboratory and get us some shadow pokes. Yep. Look how shiny that fucking pile is. <laughs> it's just, it's enticing you to pick it up because it's shiny and we love shiny things. Goddamn magpie like tendencies. Yeah. Oh shit. I pretty much speed up any po any Shadow Pokemon battles where I don't bother to capture the Shadow Pokemon. Oh, well, of course, yeah, you don't bother to capture Yama, you fucking bag. Yama is amazing. I don't understand how someone could not like Yama. Yeah, I, I, I love Yamega, don't worry, dude. I mean, Yamega's awesome, but unfortunately, Yamega didn't exist yet. Oh, well, yeah. No, Ninkad is also pretty boss. What was, uh, what was the Pokemon that you were disappointed you couldn't catch in this game, like, from what we've seen so far? Uh, let's see. Because, I mean, I, I, I remember one thing when I was playing this game, I always had, like, I was always really hated it when I, when I saw a trainer send out a Pokemon, and only to find out the Pokemon that he had that I really wanted was the Shadow. Mm -hmm. I can't really think of any at this, at this point. Uh, eh, I hear, I can't think of any. I mean, I was happy with what I got. I, 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 whenever I, I play this game, I, I pretty much. You know, whenever I play this game, I notice I pretty much like both XD and the uh, Coliseum. I guess maybe it's because I, I have a thing about habits, but I, I notice that I almost always pick the same Shadow Pokemon again and again. Oh. Like, if I remember correctly, my team last time when I played this game consisted of, uh, at the end, a Ampharos, Umbreon, Espeon, uh, Suicune, Tyranitar, and Metagross. Uh. Well, we're gonna go with something different this LP, right? We don't want it to be samey samey, do we? Well, it's not like people have <laughs> unless it's not unless people have been spying on me and watching me play this. Alright. God damn, it's fucking like Surskit, man. I mean, how does it do that? I don't know. Surskit's so swag, just sort of sliding about everywhere. I wanna do that. It's like it's ice skating. I'll fuck one I, I actually quite like a lot of the animations that, that this game has. Yeah. I, I think that they, they characterize the Pokemon fairly well. I like the dying animation, well, fainting animations. I like how that guy's, I like how that guy's freaking, uh... He's, scarf he's traumatized. It's like blowing, it is like blowing in the wind, yeah. even though they're inside a building that's that cramped. I like how when they lose, you're all sort of traumatized by everything. <laughs> oh, here's the thing. Apparently, duking this macho, macho, macho man uses a plusle. I know, I think they probably did it that on purpose, but it's like, my papa, they took his, they took away his plusle, oh no. I mean, look at this guy, he could probably crush Puzzle by just holding it. It's like just the muscles in his palm is enough to crush, crush Puzzle's fucking legs by just holding it. I like how, anyway, I like how just like, fly. in every video game, whenever people are idle, they're always, they, they keep moving, like, they're kind of breathing, and just sort of like, just flexing their legs. Anyway, this is an Ein file, which tells us by the name that, in fact, Shadow Pokemon are being manufactured by the Nazis of the Pokemon oh, world. Fuck. It's like Auschwitz, yeah, but in Pokemon. Yeah, this basically tells us about Hyper Mode. Yeah, but I've already lectured you about that, yeah. so... Let's take down the Auschwitz, man. Yep. Pokeschwitz. <laughs> 